Gaming and BS, episode 164, coming to you Tuesday, November 7th, 2017. The acoustic version of the Gamehole Con wrap up. I'm one of your hosts, Sean. And I'm Brett. Welcome to the show. Welcome back. I have the post con voice. Which I'm sure Sean and everybody else can tell if they're listening to me right now. I sound like crap. Holy cow. Brett's that was fun. Got, uh, dehydrated. Hung over like, too many beers voice. Yeah. Right. That's, yes. Yes, yes. It was indeed. Uh, as it is every year. <laughs> like extravaganza. Well, so obviously we're going to talk about Game Hole Con. It'd be stupid of us not to. We we pimp the show. We talk about it. We say, get your ass there. We are constantly telling people to show up. And we had, I think we had more people stop by our booth. And Jason Hobbs was next to us. And then um, Chris Steele from Tabletop yes. Game Talk. Chad Parrish and the Dead Game Society were a couple down from us. Um, <clears throat> it was good. There was a lot of cool stuff. Um, was it Guys Games and Beer? We're always there, Skyboy and that team. Those guys are awesome. They show up. The first thing they do is give me a custom made six pack. Here, this is for you and Sean. We see you guys every year. Here's some beer. <laughs> it's just I'm like this is this is gonna kill my liver. That's what this is gonna do. <laughs> but anyway, from a yeah. podcasting perspective, we had all the all the cool people there, and then uh, the listeners that showed up were great. We tried to get as many signatures as, as we could. Sean got this big piece of uh, uh, gaming paper. Try gaming paper, head over to gamingpaper.com. Very good. Yeah, no, no, no one supports us. We buy our own shit. But anyway, we'll talk about that crap later. Let's uh let's talk announcements. So uh Rook, I've mentioned Evercon, Evercon.org. While at Gamehole Con, Alex Cammer stopped me and goes, Brett, I promise you I will have my events ready. I'll talk to you about it, but I have to. I said, Alex, brother, you're getting through Game Hole. <laughs> get through this first. My convention's in January. You've got some time. Get your shit together. Uh, Forrest Gary and Judge Julian pulled me aside during our beer social and talked about maybe having some DCC action between the Twin Cities and Madison, maybe using my Wausau, Wisconsin, Evercon as a uh, start-of-the-year meetup. So that could be kind of cool. I'm trying to get, oh, uh, hell, I think Chris Steele might show up if he and his new lovely wife may come along and uh, run some games. So I think I've uh, I've got some good possibles uh, who may be able to join up who are f- friends of ours, fans of the show type of thing. So uh, it could be fun. I think I might even. I may even get Sean to show up this year. So right. That could be cool. I'm going to I am going to try to get up there for at least a day. Saturday would be the best day, right? You get up there Saturday, hang out, game with the boys, it'll be good. So right. anyway, evercon.org pre-reg is still open, 35 bucks for a 3-day con, pretty damn good deal. If you're able to do it, that'd be great to have you there. I know Corey and Dave Wynn, uh friends of the show, they were at the they were at Game Hole Con of course. Um Corey's got games he's going to be running, so he and the, he and his uh, family will be there. I think he's bringing his daughter, so it's uh, it's going to be a hell of a good time. Any other announcements in your side, man? Mm, no. All right, then. Let's get into Random Encounter. All right. Random Encounter, where we field v- emails, voicemails, comments from social media and listeners. Uh, you want to start, Brett? Sure. Who's this from? Sky. Sky says, BSers, feel free to pick and choose from the following ramblings. Well, Sky, we take them all, so here we go. You guys rock. First things first. I started listening to your podcast last Tuesday when 161 dropped, so 30th episodes in five days. Second at my center. <laughs> UPS, sadly, no Nazi takedowns there. Uh, my typical day is between 10 and 11 hours. UPS doesn't count your lunch as quote-unquote working, so an eight-hour day at UPS is a nine-hour day in real life. When you mentioned travel and other systems, I smacked my head thinking, of course, and went about buying a couple of adventures to cannibalize. On top of that, I scrolled down to the bottom of, what has he got? HTTPS donjon.bin.sh. I usually stop at the 5e section, but the science fiction generators have a bunch of great stuff. Jobs, ships, techno, uh, techno battle stuff, um, you know, like universal subspace dis, uh, dispatching transmitters and so on. Currently, I'm on the Dragons episode, and I have to say that after hearing all the flack you got in this later episodes, I'm interested. I'm 15 <laughs> sessions in my first campaign. I'm capping off this part of the story with a battle between my six level five players and a young blue dragon. I'm going to hamper it a bit by removing its breath attack, damaged in a mating battle with a more powerful blue dragon, and give it less than average hit points. Uh, it's a runt, hence the losing. 
Um, uh, this will, <clears throat> excuse me, this will also be why he doesn't back down. He was driven off by another dragon, but he won't flee from these tiny creatures. Pride cometh before the fall, and all that jazz. Anyway, cheers, says Sky. Oh, P.S. <laughs> he says, my mom is a hippie. It literally named me after the sky because the sunrise was just so beautiful. <laughs> That's awesome. I think he's got more. Oh, he does. Yeah. He also sent this one over to us. He said, just listen to episode 114, and Graham Maynard uh, sent in a comment on the Heroism episode in relation to Apocalypse Games. He had mentioned something, the effect of, quote, even Max uh, Rokakansky is doing a little bit to make the world better. And Sean said, who's that? Mac Rokakansky is better known as Mad Max. Oh, there we go. Long email, for, uh, <laughs> long email for short info you may have already gotten since that from a while ago. No, we did not know that was Mad Max, so thank you. <laughs> thank you, Sky. That was good. All right, yes. after that long one, I'll give you a short one. Hey, Brent and Sean. I just started checking out your podcast on episode 12, so I apologize if you already covered this. I was just curious which Kickstarter was giving you trouble, and did you end up getting your product as promised? I was looking at one that looked promising, but I am a little weary about being scammed. Take care, Scott. Well, Scott, I think the one that was pissing me off was John Wick back then. Oh. His, uh, his, what was it? it um, shit. I don't even remember what it was. I did get it. I have never backed a Kickstarter that didn't produce. What irritates me about them is when... They show up late. I don't get communications, and I get what I—I uh, I just get crappy answers back. No communication, and then people have the spine to say that they had a successful Kickstarter when they deliver product a year late. And in any other project I've ever worked on in my entire career, being 365 days past your due date is uh, known as a failure. So anyway. Yeah, I did get my stuff. I did get it from John. I did finally get my John Harper stuff from Blades in the Dark and so on. Um, one I haven't mentioned was my Astonishing Swordsman and Sorcerers of Hyperborea. That book, I got the the new hardcover. Holy mm. fuck. That thing, that thing is thicker than DCC. I've seen it. That, that thing is awesome. The only thing I wasn't able to get my hands on was the cloth map. I have the regular fold-out map that came with the book. It's great. I saw Jeff Talonin at GameWorkCon, of course. I walked up, shook his hand, gave him a big hug. I'm like, dude, that book is awesome. I said, do you have any more cloth maps? She said, I do, but not with me. Because being a conscientious man, Jeff said, here's the deal, man. I got to make sure that all the ones I'm shipping out, nothing gets damaged, wrecked, or ruined. He said, once I make sure everybody has good product, then I'll sell the next. I'll put the rest of them up for sale. So I'm hoping against hope that something will be left. I can zip over there at GaryCon in March and uh, buy one from him. So That's that. <clears throat> um, Andy Hall, Sean's G Plus post about games he was selling um, makes for an interesting show discussion. That single G Plus post made me wonder why Sean was selling these games and what other games he was not selling. Why are you selling Fate? Is it not your bag? Not mine either, but I'm curious to know why. Why sell the basic role playing stuff? What other games are you keeping? Are you finding yourself less polygamous? Are you trying to master a few systems that you favor over, over others? Are the decisions driven by the gamers you play with? They think fate is for dirty hippies. Uh, has the wife given you an ultimatum to clear out the book stacks? Andy Hall. These are good questions, Andy. Sean, what the hell's your problem? What are you doing? What's going on? Tell me more. Inquiring minds want to know, obviously. Uh, so I have some books. Like I mentioned on one show. I, 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 I go... Sean, Sean can't read. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> the secret's out. Am I supposed to try to read the next sentence? I have it in audio. Um, <laughs> I So I have The Office. I've mentioned going into to read a book or two on occasion, and I have them sitting next to my office when I go in there, in my office being my AKA bathroom. <laughs> and so what would happen was I'd, I'd have them kind of on a, on a stand or something, and then I'd be like, oh, I'm going to put this back on the shelf. And there wasn't a slot for it. This is a long, goofy rant, not rant, explanation. Uh, so anyways, there's just not enough room. Now, yes, I could buy another shelf, blah, blah, blah. As a matter of fact, I have a bunch of other things I could probably get rid of. Like I have a like German to English dictionary. It's like the big, huge, honking one. Like who needs that in today's time? But it was a gift from my wife. Anyways, 
So consider it spring, fall cleaning. Um, I've had these books for a long time. GURPS I've had for years and never, never played it. Never busted out the books. Actually, uh, correction, I've busted them out once. Like There's, once. There are a couple books when you, when you pick them up off the shelf, you go, wow, that was a layer of dust on there. That thing's yeah, actually in mint shape. I don't think I've ever, the spine hasn't even been cracked. No, yeah. not even. Like right off the shelf uh, shape. Uh, paranoia. Like I just bought that like six months ago, maybe. Um, I got a post on Google Plus when I bought it. Uh, I think Michael Drescher was like, I got this cool paranoia. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And I'll buy that. And yeah, I think I opened the box, started reading one of the manuals. So the short of it is if I knew I was going to play them, I would keep them. And if I have a group that decides like, hey, I want to play GURPS, BRP, um, Fate, I'd be like, great. I'd just go out and buy it. Like, okay, Brett's because he's going to run Fate. I'm going to go buy it by Fate. Or get the PDF. Or get the Did PDF. You. I've actually but, started some of the thing I did when I was, I've, I think I've skinny down as far as I'm going to go. I sold the last few things at Game of Con to Noble Knight. Got a few shuckles for it. But I, at this point, I, the stuff I sold this time, like I have a PDF of this game. I'm, I don't need the hardcover. I don't need the softback. I'm not going, I don't see any, Near future or near future use for this, but I have a PDF just in case it were to come up. And then if for some reason I'm like, oh my god, I gotta have this book, it's the best game ever, I'll go fucking find it somewhere and buy it. Right. Now, Andy may say, which he kind of alludes to, is why did I keep those books and or why did I keep or get, want to be rid of those books and those games specifically? And what did I keep? So what did I keep? Um, Star Wars Fantasy Flight Games. Star Wars Saga Edition, uh, Star Wars D6. So all the Star Wars type of properties I pretty much kept. Um, I think I've actually gotten rid of like D20 Star Wars. But Saga Edition, D6, um, and, you know, will I ever play the Saga Edition games? Mm, maybe not, but some one of them I have my name in as a, as a play tester. It's one of the one things, one of the actual publications I've ever had credits in, so... It's kind of and it's expensive. It's the uh, old Republic uh, source book. Anyways, I digress. But uh, those D and D first edition, all the way through. I think I still got my second edition books. Um, to I did get rid of my three O, my four O. Then I have the five O, five fifth edition stuff. Um, some modules, a lot of campaign settings I've kept. Like I have the Shackled City. I've got. Some of the adventures, the Ravenloft, Ravenloft, not Curse of Stroud, Ravenloft 3.5, Under Mountain. Oh, okay. um, so a lot of those adventures, Midnight Campaign setting. I mean, I don't want to go through my entire collection because it's still pretty kind of beefy. Um, Savage World stuff, all the Savage World settings powered by the Apocalypse stuff. I think the only thing I might be unloading is Uncharted Worlds. Otherwise, like the Sprawl. Powered by the Apocalypse Second Edition, I'm keeping. Uh, I'm getting rid of Mashed, and uh, what else am I keeping? Dungeon World's a keeper. Uh, so those for PBTA, and then I think like uh, Knights Black Agents, I'm keeping because I like the espionage genre. I still want to play that game; it appeals to me. All my Spycraft stuff, I still have. Uh, Savage World stuff, I have, uh, and all the settings that I have from that, not to get into each one, but I, I saved all uh, that stuff. What well, I'll tell you, man, when we had Alex on the show, we were talking about collecting a number of episodes back. You know, <clears throat> one of the things I mentioned to him was, you know, how did, wh- what did you do to limit your collection? Obviously, he has a lot of stuff. He's very interested in gaming, but his hardcore collection is TSR from the beginning to a certain po- period. That's where first he's edition, at. First edition AD&D. Yeah, I mean, that's his thing. And... um I think for those of us um, not blessed with the um, financial fortitude that other people have for such heavy-duty collections, it's easier for me to look at it and go, I have not played this in five years. I don't have any nostalgia ties to it. Why do I have this? <clears throat> you know, I, I think sometimes it's just easy to say I could. It's a sunk cost. I spent $25, 30 100 whatever it is on this stack of books. 
right now, if you gave me 25 bucks for it, sure, I could use the 25 bucks easier than I could use, you know, 50 pounds of the paper. I just, I'm not using it. It's of no use to me. Give me something for it. So, and sometimes, you know, you trade stuff out, you swap it to other guys, and maybe do get something you want. But, yeah, I, I think it's just uh, part of it's time. You know, we only have so much time to game that we're able to make and coordinate in our lives. And I think that's part of the reason why the, the new shiny stuff is, is still really, really cool. I'm super interested in it, but I'm more interested in, I think I'm more interested in settings now than I am systems as of late. That might be a thing. Anyway, sorry, Sean. Yeah, no, that's all right. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of, and, you know, a few shekels in my pocket for, you know, dead weight probably doesn't hurt. Um, at one point in time, I was looking at, I started getting involved, uh, and getting involved is kind of fast and loose, but um, with the tiny house kind of movement, and they, um, you know, it, it, some may say, well, that's crazy, and a hippie, and whatever, you know what it's they're kind of off the grid and there's any reasons but one of the things that really kind of struck me about that is just simplifying and paring down and not having stuff that you really don't need and frankly if i give it to noble knight somebody might you know say like sabe uh sabe is a local guy and he chimed in like hey man before you throw that out to them you know can i can i pick up a few of those titles sabe he'll pick them up and he'll run them. That's the thing. Like he'll get Torchbearer and he'll run Torchbearer and he'll like it, and, you know, but it's not doing anybody any favors on my shelf. And then, so Andy might say, well, why don't you run them? Or why did you buy them and not run them? And uh, it's just, so I'm kind of core getting down to core properties. So it's not like I dislike any of them. Um, as a matter of fact, fate uh, it's just, I'm just ignorant. I haven't like played it. I haven't opened up the books. So, yeah, that's. I don't know if that answers the questions, but pretty much it. I mean, there's no. I mean, I'm not like. Well, I need to. I need like 400 bucks, and then selling all this crap would be a you know a very big help. Or you know, the wife's not getting giving me an ultimatum. Like you have too much shit, you have to get rid of it. It's just simply like, I'm not using it. It's time to go. Like so. When you get into the 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 uh, tiny house thing, as a matter of fact, you watch watch some shows on some of those home networks. I mean, they talk about like if you haven't touched something in five years, it, it should be chucked. Like, why are you I've, why I've are you heard saving? That before. Some... Yeah. yeah, and 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 people, it's weird. People get into like, I mean, hoarders aside, you know, some people really get into, and I've I've been a victim of this. Like, I've had like hard drives and video cards that I've had since like the 1990s. And I'm like, why going through do all I this, have this? Why do I have this crap? Right. And then I'm like, I'm going to toss it. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I should probably hook it up and see what's on here. And like, it's been sitting in a freaking box in my basement buried somewhere for like 15 years. Yeah. Six, you know, longer than that. What am I going to find on there? That's like some goofy treasure. Like it's not, it's not going to happen. I had a bunch of CD-ROMs with a bunch of software on it. I'm like, or stuff on it. I'm like, I don't even know why I got this. So that's another reason too, is just these things I've had for a long. Now, some of them I just recently bought. And so I think even being very more selective in the future. So I went to Game Hulk Con. I didn't buy anything uh, because of just that reason. But I'm going to put this on my shelf and I'm going to play it. So the, anyways, only stuff I, the only stuff I bought at Game Hole, I bought a couple of adventures I wanted, two for DCC. One, um, I wanted it in print. I had the PDF, and I wanted it in print. So I got that and bought a different one. I can't remember the title of it. And then I like to buy Alex's adventures that he, Ed Greenwood, and Josh uh, of Game Hole Crew fame also wrote one. So I like to, I like those. I've used those. Um, I think they're well-written, and I've uh, <laughs> torn some really good ideas out of them over the past. But that's the type of stuff I was buying. <sighs> All right. What's next? So I got one. We got one from uh, Facebook. Did we? Okay. Yeah, the Curse of the Silver Lake. There, it says, our show originates from a play-by-post game. I'd say the most important rule is that players must respond on a timely basis. So this is going back to episode 163, play-by-post. I'd say the most important rule is that players must respond in a, on a timely basis or have their turn skipped. 
If one player lags, then the other players start to lag and the game will die. So that's somebody coming from somebody that posted on our Facebook page uh, in regards to that episode. We didn't have a ton of feedback on it, but that was coming from somebody that's experiencing and, and doing the play by post game. And I'm sure somebody out there that's listening that's doing that as well would say that's probably pretty solid advice because it's true. Like one person does a post, everybody's kind of waiting. It's kind yeah, of your turn, like, right? It's hey, kind of like the only way turn. we can – your turn. It's like those people that, well, we, we'll play, but Brett can't make it. Oh, we'll move it for this for Brett. Well, we'll move the game for Brett. We'll move the game for Brett. How many times do you reschedule for Brett before you say, fuck that guy, and <laughs> we're going to move on without him, and right, we'll replace him? And I think um, perhaps sometimes people in play-by-post or those type of scenarios, because you don't have the face-to-face, you can kind of fade or perhaps not have the uh... – anyway, I, I think that makes total sense. And uh, to add some uh, some teeth to that, it would be like, look, you need to respond. Turns need to be processed within X number of days or hours or whatever the rule is, and then stick with it. You may be 10% plus or minus either way, but, yeah, if you don't hold people accountable for shit like that, it'll just drag. Yep. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody, Yeah, for commenting, writing in. We appreciate it. Keep them coming in. Uh, as a matter of fact, I want to I wanna comment quick uh, before we leave this piece was that game, Holcon, and, you know, I apologize. I cannot remember who brought this up for the life of me. But one of the things that they had mentioned was they were listening to the show, and they were expressing their, their thanks for, for the show. And, and one of the things that they brought up was, I think they're, they're just kind of getting started, maybe episode 30-ish. But one of the things they liked was you we we would do the topic. I don't know. I don't think I shared this with Brett. They, we, you guys would do the topic, and then the following week you would have feedback from everybody about that. And sometimes that feedback is actually better than what you guys were. You there when that? Were you no, there this person? Uh, but we've been told this before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's maybe right. I'm just I'm repressing that. But um, <laughs> but yeah, they they said that a lot of comments and feedbacks can sometimes be. And I think they didn't say better, even though that may have been the truth. I think they were trying to be delicate with their how they were conveying this to, as to not offend me, uh, mm-hmm. us. But, yeah, my point is your comments and feedback and uh, insight into different options that we're not covering specifically in the topic, other people are appreciating that. So it's not – if you think, like, hey, I'm going to write in, but I don't know – or I don't know if anybody will get any value out it out of it. Somebody will. I'm telling you. So it's not just Brett and I that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. We have this view, and it's like it's not the right way, the be all end way. Uh, there's we are learning from you guys as well, and gals because we. So that's cool, and I've wanted to share that with everybody because if you're considering writing in, it does help not only like us and the community or community like you and us but everybody no absolutely correct absolutely true i i totally support that the thing we wanted to do is it's you know sean and brett talking about stuff we don't have all the answers we're not the experts in everything or anything sometimes probably anything right anyway um this conversation we had a lot of good chats with the listeners hanging out with vc young and his girlfriend his buddy jeff were there amanda's his girlfriend we're all hanging out talking and uh vc and i got a ton of different conversations then hobbs would walk over he would jump right into where we were and then kev Thulu would pop over and farmer and just tons of people we would just kind of go from group to group talking about all these things like at the social and stuff and that's the the feedback you're giving us is the it's kind of like the play-by-post if you will of the show Right, we throw a thing out there. You guys respond, and we re- try to respond back instead of having a large town hall where we all get together and and kibitz about stuff because we all can't get to the same gaming convention. Um, this is the next best thing for us. So, thank you. I really appreciate it. As I know, Sean does too. It's good stuff. Yes. So, thanks everybody. Keep it coming in. Um, let's get to the main topic. Boo doo We're gonna talk about Game Hulkon and just no, no, not no, no, and no. I'm not. I don't want to do like a blow by blow recap because that's not that interesting. But uh, one of the things that Sean and I had initially thought to do, we did for the past few, we've recorded some seminars. We were there and we said, hey, let's, uh, Josh and Alex, what do you guys got going? What seminars do you have? Who can we, who should we cover? Blah, blah, blah. And um, 
we got there and we're going and Sean had some other stuff he had to take care of. And I've got my wife and kids are coming on Saturday and want to hang out with them and, and game and run stuff and do things with people. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we kind of looked at each other and I'm like, I don't know if we're going to, we're going to get to record. And I said, fuck it. We're not going to record it. <laughs> and I don't think, well, let's just not record seminars this year. I, I don't think it was, I don't think it's something that we needed to stress for. If you will, we were having a lot of fun, be able to kind of float around, talk to different groups. I think what we'll do um, is potentially – we may have tried to bite off more than we could chew, and I think then by the time we got there and we looked at the, the volume of work it would be, it kind of eats up Saturday is what, it ends, is what it ends up doing. A lot of the seminars are on Saturday, some on Friday, but some of the big hitters are on Saturday. And that's when most of the guests are there, and that's when we like to hang out with most – of the listeners and our friends and even people who don't listen to podcasts but we're still friends with and want to run games and do things. So we opted not to cover um, any of the panels. So, Sean, are you you still thinking the, the same there? Like, yeah, we'll just kind of do the newspaper reporter thing maybe next year, send one of us yeah. in and come back with what comes. Yeah. Now, one of the things I mentioned to a few people and in, in Brett, too, is like last year and the year before, rushing around – with our gear, I mean, literally, this is the way it went out. And some of the folks that were with us, like I think, you know, Chris from Mr. Acted Mark, give those guys a listen. Um, he was there, and I, I, I know he was there when we were doing this. So, like, okay, a game ended. I tote all our crap into a conference room, and I literally, Brett and I are scrambling to plug wires into microphones and in mixers, and then, you know, the hosts are kind of sitting there, like, or I should say, the speakers you guys good we're like yep we're all good and then goes through we manage the mics record the show to record the panel and then after it's done there's another one and we could probably leave our stuff in there but we're not sure like we just the setup wise do we leave thousands of dollars of recording equipment laying in the corner right at a gaming convention on a uh unwatched right and and it's so Break it all down, put it in a bag, roll it down to the table. Brett might have a game like immediately after that has to go. So like, and then I think it happened one year. Like Brett's like, "Hey, dude, I really wish I could help you break down, but I had to go game." Yep, nope, I got it, no problem. I'm just gonna put wires in a bag and call it, you know, put it in. Rinse, repeat that like twice like, at least, and it's it's just it just sucks for me. Like I just I'm not a big fan of doing that. Yes, so this year they had mentioned maybe you know we're gonna have mics already wired up. Great. I'm not sure why, because I don't think they had a PA system. Like a, the sound wasn't coming through the speaker, so I'm not sure what the mics were outputting to. And I went in there, and I'm like, "Oh, th- this will be great if I can just take my portable recorder and take a wire and plug it into where the sound is coming out, or a additional output." And I couldn't figure it out uh, with a quick glance. Uh, it was kind of daisy chained, weirdly boring you to death, but but. You know, I was like, well, I could try or and and we're then trying I would to break be, it. Right. Yeah, and we're trying to be very unobtrusive and we don't want to break somebody else's shit. The last thing you want to do is show up and go, hold on, everybody. We're two assholes you don't even know. Right. So, hey, special guest, Patrick Rothfuss, just shut the fuck up while we get this done. That's just, no. that's like, hey, look, it's the two dickheads from Gaming and BS. Yeah, we didn't want to do that. Right. So, yes. I think instead of – so kind of shifting our focus, that was a focus thing. And we talked uh, – Hobbs, Jason Hobbs was there, which is just fucking awesome because he's cool, and and uh, Chris Steele and so on. We had a great table area. Yes, very good stuff. We had a great table area that was kind of cordoned off right by the podcast row. Um, I was dubbed the Pope of Podcast Village by Josh, which I thought was funny because um, it's the first guy there, so I was assigning tables and doing shit. But anyway um, – all the games are under our banner and uh, the Tabletop Game Talk, Chris Steele's banner. We're all running the same space, which is awesome. Yes. And Hobbs, Chris, and I were talking over beer, and I said, you know what we should probably do is if we're not going to focus on the seminar stuff, maybe we focus on more coordinated events. <clears throat> right? Yeah. So maybe we do, you know, Hobbs runs a hex crawl one day, which then leads to J- uh, to Jason Hobbs does the hex crawl. Brett does the du- does the town event. Sean runs the dungeon, and then you know, or maybe Chris does. I don't know. Just how can we do this? Ways to intermix our listenership, friends of the show, whoever wants to game with us, don't fucking care. But what can we do to bring more games to the gaming convention? So I think that may be more of our thrust going forward. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, it's, I do think a, a little. So I 
my schedule, so they might say, you know, what'd you do? You know, this reminds me of some of the early days I'd go to cons and not know, don't know what to do. Like, could just roam around. Brett does that kind of, like at Gary Con, he roams around and does that. Right. That's your, that's Brett's shtick. You're muted, dude. Bingo board. Look at that. That's, <laughs> that's my thing at Gary Con is I wander around and I talk to people. Yes. So, and that's, um, that's not a knock, but that this year I did this. I mean, that's what I did. I ran one game on Thursday night. And that was pretty much done. So it was like uh, more social interaction, um, catching up with people, in, meeting new people uh, that I've known or connected to online and haven't met face-to-face. Um, so I think that way – and I had a couple things that personally came up. I had a couple appointments I had to go to, which really puts a kicker like, hey, I have to go leave a con for an hour – or two in the middle of the back. day <laughs> in the middle of the day like work like yes and it, so that really just i i was kind of in between right so if you go to go to a con you kind of like i'm some of you like i'm taking off for five days asking off of work or whatever you get in an airplane and you fly there and you're like there the whole time and that you're just unplugged from all adulting well Unfortunately, two of those days I had to do adulting, and it's like I think that kind of threw me off my game. But anyways, um, but it was good. Roamed around. I don't know. Yeah. So I'll tell you the other thing, though. So that's kind of like an overall lesson learned. What could Sean and I do different, or how could we run it a little bit better? From what can we bring to the table, right, to get people involved in doing stuff? And I also like the fact that not being in the seminars, more time. Um, I got shit the one year for all you do is sit in front of the booth. I'm like, this is fucking fun. Everybody like, cl- like just shows up. Um, you know, when uh, one of the listeners um, shows up and says, hey, I got a game. Can I stash my gear back here? I'm like, I don't fucking care. Throw your stuff back there. I'm just I got nothing going for another two hours. Perfect. So I <laughs> got a pile of backpacks behind us. Eli Kurt shows up and goes, can I put all my stuff here? Go ahead, Eli. I don't give a shit. It just became a nice place, you know, a safe place to to do that type of thing. So and then interactions, new new listeners, people coming by, and and so on. The other thing that I think was really driven home to me is that running games at conventions and playing at conventions. If you have the opportunity to, do, if you're at all interested in improving your gaming chops, either as a GM or player, get to a convention and do it at least one. If you're gonna, if you can go, go to a convention at least play one game, and even if you pick a game that you have played before. Like, look, I'm a and d guy, and that's just what I do. Fine. But I really think if you want to improve your gaming chops, do the convention thing at least once, if you, if you, if you can. Because I sit at the table on my Streets of Avalon game, and I had nobody there I'd ever run for before. I mean, I know VC. I know Hobbs. They're both in the game. I've never run a game or gamed with them before. So I'm like, I have no idea how this is going to go. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> con cough. Um, but... Hobbs is like, he, he had just run a four hour game, and right after that, he sits down on my table. He's kind of tired, but damn, he's getting into character and he's playing well, and VC's getting into stuff, and all the other guys are doing things. And we had an older gentleman there. Um, I think it might have been um, uh, Mike Passwall, his buddy, um, family friend, older gentleman. Um, I would say mid 60s is where, just, and I'm guessing. So, Mr. Passwall, if I'm overstating your, your friend's age, I apologize. But he came out and said, I've never played 5e. It's been a very, very long time since I've gamed. Um, I really don't know a lot about it, but I figured I could I could figure it out. I said, oh, what kind of games do you play? So I play a lot of video games, which threw me. I'm like, you play video games? Thinking in my head, I'm like, wow, I didn't, you know, because I got a stereotype in my head, like, hey, old guy doesn't play video games, you know? He goes, no. He said, I'm not as physically quick. Obviously, some of the kids chuckle, chuckle. But I like to play casters, people that sit in the background, and so on. So this time, I want to play a fighter. Because I don't have to worry about hand-eye coordination. All I have to do is tell you what I want and roll some dice. I'm like, here's the, here's the fighter, man. Kick some ass. And um, it was he was trying to learn. And he would um, say what he was trying to accomplish and look at me and go, is that right? And I would say, it's up to you. You make the decision. Well, I don't think we have any of this, these skills. I said, this is your party. Ask him, ask her, ask him. Oh, okay. Then he would turn and ask. You know. And then when I ran my Wraith game... Immediately afterwards, I ended up with um, my buddy Lenny was playing the Shadow, which was really awesome. I ended up with one open spot, so Alpha stepped in. But I still had three <laughs> three other people. It was just a four-player game. But I had three other people, and one of them was a gamer I gained with 
last year briefly, <clears throat> but the other two guys had no clue. First dude's head's down, playing the game on his phone, waiting for the game to start. Won't look me in the eye. Mm. Next guy sits down, his head's down. Um, he didn't want to talk much. He was just very shy, very to himself. He was busy eating. I'm like, okay. I'm like, hey, how's it going? Good. I'm waiting for a more. Res- how's your con? Fine. I'm like, oh, Christ. I don't know what this is going to It turned out to be the best game ever. But between the two games, it was freaking awesome. It was like I really hit my stride. And I think the other component is that not only learning to work with different people and game master for different groups and styles of play, um, I also learned a lot about this is how I, I ran my Wraith game, how Brett prefers to run games. The Avalon game I tried to do a little more scripted, and I didn't feel as good. So I learned I learned something about myself, and I'm like, hey, ah. if you're going to do this, do it this way. You'll hit your stride faster as a GM, and you'll have a much more fun. I'll pat myself on the back for a second. After the game was done, I had a gentleman come up to me. He goes, hey, we're sitting at the, ta- at the booth because it's right next to where the tables were. He goes, hey, and I said, hi. And he said, that was awesome. I'm like, I don't know this guy. What do you mean? He goes, I was just sitting there with my friends watching you, and you run the table. And he said, no one Game masters like that. That was amazing. I looked at my friend and said, that's what we should do. We should run games like that. I'm like, wow, that's that's incredibly flattering. I've, I've never had anybody say such a thing to me. That was amazing. That was really, really flattering. But it was still, uh, apart from that really flattering comment, the other cool part was just figuring that piece out about how I like to run and then um, looking at just the different style of gamers. How do I pull this guy away from his phone? How do I get this guy to talk who doesn't yeah. seem to be interested? And this other gentleman who's never really done this before, doesn't isn't a seasoned pro, everyone else at the table had played countless hours of RPGs. So it was, uh, that was just, in, just um, doing it is, I learned a lot, which was really yeah. cool. It's interesting you you mentioned that because I had a similar experience. I had one game, and uh, it's com- interesting dynamic. Uh, I had so start out. I ran Savage Worlds. Forget about it. I've run it once before. Uh, you play five mobsters. I mentioned this on a show prior, but I know some people like may not be in our back catalog. But the essential gist of it is an accountant's been skimming things off the books. You, as a group, are heading out into the desert to take care of the headache, which is in your trunk. And um, who knows what could happen. And then there are some meta points, uh, backstory pieces, not meta, backstory pieces of the characters that tie one another to each other and creates a little bit of stress between the players. All right. I won't tell you what happened. I'll just say it was a TPK. We'll just leave it at that. It was, <laughs> it was their choice, I would say, for the most part. Um, everybody died. Uh, yeah. And so having said that there was one person in, in the group and I would say, I think two or three people had all played together, right? Like this is our, like we're part of the same game home group, right? Uh, home game group there. And I think, I think so. Uh, but they, at least all three knew each other. Um, one uh, was CW, um, patron of the show. And then a buddy of mine, Gabe, I love Gabe. He, I don't think he listens to us because he's, he's more of a board gamer. But I've known Gabe for a while. So Gabe, I love this. Uh, it's funny. He's like, hey. hey. I'm like, hey, Gabe, right? I didn't expect him to be there. He's like, on Thursday night there. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, hey, I signed up for your game. I go, no kidding? He's like, yeah, yeah. That's like my second time role playing, like my, playing a role playing game. I'm like, that's awesome. And he goes, but, but I don't know the rules. I'm like, ah, you don't need them. And he's like. Well, I didn't bring any gear. I'm like, you won't need it. Don't worry about it. Well, like, I don't well, know what I'll be doing. Thing, my favorite I don't know thing I'm going to do. Yeah. My favorite thing Sean said. He's like, I walk up and goes, anybody here ever play Savage no, Worlds? No, no, you still on my thunder. <laughs> oh, sorry. So, go, go, go. So, take it. So, the, so, you know, we all sit down, and the first thing I'm like, okay, here's player characters, but let me just start out and ask, has anybody ever played Savage Worlds before? Chirp, 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 chirp. crickets. <laughs> Nobody, not not a single person. I'm like, well, oh, we can throw that rule book right across the room. Don't need that this evening. Um, so that's awesome. So so for folks that are like really nervous, like, oh, I'm gonna have a rules lawyer at the table, and they're gonna call me out on everything I don't know. Look at that man. I had five people at my table, and none of. I mean, I could have made up any. Like, well, you really can't do that because of this. I could have made up anything. There's an interesting thing. That's a very good point because no one had played Wraith before except for my buddies Alpha and Lenny. Lenny was just helping me be the shadow ship, you know, poking people and driving them mad, which was fun. Um, 
But even then, I con games are this wonderful thing where you can you can say, look, I'm going to run it based on this system. And you look people in the eye and say, look, I'm not using that. I'm using that. You can specialize, tweak, and make con games. <coughs> excuse me, unless you're playing like an adventure league or organized play. A lot of people that I run into um, seem to expect something wacky, different, interesting. I'm um, like, look, if the game was different, and yeah, we didn't use that ruler. Oh yeah, we kind of hand wave that. We only had two hours. We only had four hours. We only had three hours to play this game, and I have yet to run into people um, who are too pissy about it. Like, no, you have to use the uh, the chase rules as they're written. Otherwise, this isn't a real version of Knights of Black Agents. I yeah, I've not I've yet to hear that. So you do not have to have absolute mastery of the system in order to run. If you run. Brett, Brett style fast and loose, you can totally get away with it. Now, one of the things I would say to be conscious of, is, and I probably should have made this clear, is uh, so what if they think that that's the way the game is? Like, oh, Savage Worlds, right, and how I ran it may not have been accurate. So they may get like, wait a minute. You know, they, they may say, oh, this is awesome, or maybe it's not that awesome. Then they sit down with Ron Blessing. He's like, who the fuck taught you how to play this damn game? Right, right. They go and meet Christian Serrano, who we've had on the show with Ron, you know, and they're like, that's not how you play Savage Worlds. I played with Sean and Game Hole Con, and it wasn't even like this. But that might be the past. Like, oh, he played with Kelly or Blazinski. Fine, fine. I get it. Well, you will unlearn all you have learned to get back here. You have to reprogram your brain. Um, but yes, so that was fun. That was something to note. But I also had one gentleman at the at the table who was relatively quiet, reserved. Um, I was worried that I was losing him. Like this is kind of boring. I don't want to be here, you know. So there was a couple times I had to just like turn to him and you know, okay, what do you do? What is your person doing? Uh, and he would, yep, take an action, make kind of something, but kind of lower key than the rest of the group. Um, and at even one point I'm like, Hey, you all right? You having a okay time or, you know, just, and I'm sure if he's like, this sucks. I mean, some people would just probably tell you, um, but nonetheless, you know, he, at the end it was like, yeah, it was a great time. So it's even harder. Sometimes it can be just very hard to read players at the table. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if they go stoic on you or they're not, uh, Type A thespians jumping up and down like Brett does uh, at his <laughs> games. Don't don't let it set you off. Um, I haven't had any player get up and walk off out of a table. Now, if we're going to stay on this topic, I do have a story. I don't know if you know this. Go for it. No, go. So I got to give props to Michael. Dr- so, okay, at some point in time, somebody came up to me. Again, I can't remember who it was. I talked to a lot of people. Um, but they mentioned – Hey, I played in two games run by Gaming NBS, and the the game the game masters were awesome. Like, if I go to another con, like if I come back, I want to sign up for one of your guys' games again. So, props, huge props to all Very. the game masters that have represented. And the reason I stipulate this is one, you guys deserve the credit. There was feedback to be to be had that I I received. So, letting you guys know. Um, thank you so much. Right. So that way, you know, great. I, no, absolutely. That's awesome. Because if you're running a game under a banner where we hope that you have fun and it's cool and it's, you know, props to us that you're willing to come out and support us, the show and just come to the convention, hang out. And the fact that you guys are, you men and women are bringing your A games. That's just, that's fucking awesome. Thank you. So that leads me to my interaction with Michael Drescher. So Michael is local. He's a good guy. Great. Uh, we Brett and I have met him on multiple occasions, and he was telling me about his game. And he had it was supposed to be an eighteen and over game, and he had a sixteen year old show up to the game. Now I'm not going to go into the, the the huge details because I'm I don't want to get them wrong or misconstrue them. But let us just say that the sixteen year old, first of all, shouldn't have been there. Uh, he didn't kick him out, um, and I'm not sure how do you enforce that because. I think he just asked him, like, you know, how old are you? Because this is, or, or he, you know, or maybe the, he volunteered that. Regardless, he was in the group purposely messing things up, like making a really? conscious, making a conscious effort to, 
uh, for lack of better words, fuck with the rest of the members of the party. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Characters. Yeah, and he's like, that's what I do. As a matter of fact, Michael, you know, he's like, blah, 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 talk to him. And he's like, yep, that's the way I play. And he says, but if you keep continuing to do this, they may kill your guy, and I will be unable to stop them. And he's like, nope, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> And okay. He goes, okay. Right. Exactly. Okay. So I asked Michael. I said, well, "Did you did you pull him aside? Yep. Pulled him aside. Didn't do it in front of the group. So I'm like, perfect man. Way to go. Right. Pull him aside. Like, hey, you're kind of being disruptive here. And he's very diplomatic with with it all. Right. Michael's not. He's a super nice like, guy. No. Super nice. Right. Very good demeanor. Not going to be. So hey, just letting you know, you're being disruptive. These guys are going to get ticked off. Blah, 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 blah. Like, in the 16-year-old, you know, the, the younger guy was just, that's the way I, I roll. And he was good. So when they got back to the table, he said, okay, by the way, it's open season. If, you know, he, and the group tried to work with them regardless. Wow. Um, that's super there nice. Was even, there was even an X card pulled. Really? Yep. There was an X card pulled because the... They got into a room and there was something going on, and I don't know if it was like priestesses or a priestess in in this room or something that was described. And of course, the, the young kid was like, "What are they wearing?" And and somebody was like, "Oh, hold on a second, you know, like too they much, tap too the much. Car- tap the card. It's not that's you know because he's taking an angle, and the guys are kind of realizing um, where this may be going, and it's not." This is not, you know, 16-year-old fantasy hour, like, in that yeah, don't, respect, don't, right? don't be that guy. Right. And, and so, you know, I think Michael's chalking this up to just maturity level, right? Fair. Um, and this, could, this, this young, young man could, be, could have been, like, 40, right? He, he could have been that guy. <laughs> he absolutely uh, could have been. So, um, you know, that's – having said that, so he, he – they they tapped the card and were like, nope. And I said, oh, man, that's awesome. I didn't even know you'd had the card out there on the table. Yep. And so that happened. I would imagine they had a good time because of how he handled that situation. But, um, I mean, and he's – I don't think Michael's run a ton of con games. I don't know if this was his first time running con games. I think it might have been last year. But – you know, some of the, like Mike folks like Michael aren't going to like five cons a year, running five games each con. Fair. So, no, that's that's fair. Right. So like, just the oh, I give him a lot of props for how he handled the whole thing. You know, and every like top kudos to to that. So uh, just an example of what you may run into and how to maybe handle it. And I think I don't know if he talked to the group separately from the young man. I think. I think what happened is he came back to the table was like, Hey, just in case you want to know, this is all good. And you know, if you're, he's totally understands where his place is. So, and so I think he moderated that. Yeah. So it wouldn't really get out completely out of control. And frankly, maybe some of the feedback is because of the way Michael even handled that situation. I mean, it could have been a shit show. Oh, it could have been an absolute shit show. It could have got escalated and yelled and screamed, and people could have got really pissed off and stomping around. Right. <laughs> so kudos, man. That's awesome. You know, and the yes. other, just to give another um, a Game Master shout-out, just specifically, uh, we had a Game Master who wasn't able to make it for a Thursday night game, um, mm-hmm. and d- we weren't able to get the the event canceled. And Josh from Game Hook goes, Brett, I got a table full of gamers. I said, yeah, it's a gaming BS event. I said, where's my Game Master? He goes, I don't know. I said, fuck, <clears throat> Hobbs is gone, Sean's running, I have nothing prepared, I don't, I'm like deer in the headlights, Edwin Nagy sitting next to me, he goes, I got this, what do you need me to do? I'm like, really? He goes, yeah, I'll do something. So, I grab some gaming BS tchotchkes, run back there, say, hey guys, I'm sorry, hang on a second, I, I think I've got a game master for you, give me a minute. It's a group of like four or five people, they don't look happy, right? Because they're Thursday, they're like, uh, they're looking yeah, angry. starting. Starting, starting this is not good, you know. <laughs> but I come back, and actually Hobbs wasn't running, but he's like, I could run, and Edwin can run. Edwin's like, no, I got this, because he's there for Frog God Games, and he's run a ton of different stuff, and he's he's really good. 
And he's like, no, nah, dude, I got this. Okay, cool. Thanks, man. So, Edwin, uh, once again, man, thank you very much. I thanked him probably a dozen times that evening and over the weekend. But we got the other game um, that the GM couldn't couldn't run uh, canceled, which was fine. But he stepped up and grabbed onto that. And uh, I said, "How'd it go?" He goes, "Everyone had a good time. We had a lot of fun. Let play a little swords and wizardry. Everyone had a good had a good run of it." So I uh, watched the gamers walk out, you know, and I'm like, "Oh, are they gonna storm over here and punch me in the face?" No, everyone was smiling. Uh, so it worked. So that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much, Edwin. That was that was huge. Uh, definitely. Um. So yeah, what else but do I- we want to talk about? Well, I was going to say, though, just to go back to Michael for one more minute, that type of event and that type of learning, that's like the the heavy hitter version of, wow, Brett has a quiet guy at the group. Sean has a quiet guy. I don't know if this person will play. Boy, she seems pretty reserved. I've played one con game where I had this woman who whose head was down, looked like she was drawing and ignoring everything. And then in the middle of something, she'd pop up and be very relevant and go back. I'm like, oh, this is how she processes info. And I mentioned this ages back on a different show, but she gave me her notes afterwards. They were really gorgeous. She had all these beautiful pictures drawn on it and how she took notes for the for the game. But um, it's it, you learn a lot by running games at cons and even playing. A lot of folks I've talked to when they've played, they've learned, wow, I like this system. I know who the guy running it said, you know, we ran a little fast and loose. Or, hey, I'm I'm ignoring this rule for the sake of speed, but I really like this. And I know a lot of people go to cons specifically to – they they go through the list, find the game system they've never played before but have been interested in, and boom, <clears throat> throw down their $4 bill and uh, sit there for four hours or three hours or whatever it is and try to figure the game out. <clears throat> so that's it's just another good thing for you to do. The other thing I think on a game messaging perspective is I have learned that four hours is actually pretty long for me to run at a con. I can two hours feel as tight for Three would be probably right in my sweet spot, but they don't have three hour chunks. So um, I think what I um, I ended both of my games end a little bit early, and no one seemed to mind. It was it was fine. And I think back so in I, my head that that some games I'm like some guys TPK the whole fucking crew in twenty minutes. Um, it can't be that bad. Anyway, so go. I'm, I was going to say that I think my goal would be to run a three and a half hour game in a four hour slot. Yeah, I that's, think that's. Because if you're if you are really gung ho and you're back to back, you literally don't get a break. And yeah. I think sometimes I think even when you start getting into the four hour time frame, depending on the pace of the game, it's probably just enough to be like, okay, I'm I'm really about done with this one. Like, just it would be good as a wrap up point right around that mark. I think now I could be wrong, and it's not. I mean, mileage may vary for each individual person, of course. You know, actually, that's a really good thought. I was trying to sort out how to take a four-hour four hour slot and better crunch it up, even <clears throat> going so far as to say, well, even if I ended half hour, 45 minutes early, I could say, thank you all very much. What did you think? Did you like this character? Did you like this? You know, try to get some, elicit some feedback where I could. Um, but nobody seems to mind if you end a little bit on the early side because they, too, have got <laughs> shit to do. Um uh, Sean's buddy Rather, who comes down from the Twin Cities, and I, I now talk to him plenty too when he's here. The dude has no white space in, in his schedule. Like, what are you doing? Got to go to a game. It's eight in the morning. I know. I'm like, it's Sunday. What are you doing, dude? He's just go, go, go. But um, anytime. So I think I think you're right. I think if I consider three to three and a half hours successful, I'd probably be fine. Because then there's usually like a bio break somewhere in between a four game. Somebody's got to take a leak, get some food, do something. So you take a 10 or 15 minute break and um, I think you figure three to three and a half hours when a four hour slot should be fine. So I think just, and this is Brett learning. I, I have not run as many con games as Sean and some of the rest of you folks. So I'm learning my own pacing when it comes to these type of kind of boxed events. Yeah. And I like this scenario. I like the scenario that I run because it's very easy to wrap it up. You can look at the clock and go, all right, time to throw them at the, at the end of the road. Because that's what it is. It's like, literally, you're going to an end of a road um, to bury this guy. So it's, oh, well, I've ran two, three encounters. It's three hours in, time to throw down the big one. And then done. Turn on the meat grinder. What's that noise? You'll find out in a minute. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. What else did we want to cover, Brett? 
I think um, the other thing that was kind of fun was Sean and I had heard from Alex that our social on Saturday, somebody else was vying for the spot. Hey, we want the Saturday. We're like, no, that's ours. And he, Alex was like, done. You got Saturday. Turned out it was Ed Greenwood um, who wanted our Saturday slot. <laughs> And he went, fine, I'll do Friday instead. So um, we're going to see if Alex is tight with with the Ed Greenwood group. We're going to see if we can maybe expand the Saturday thing, perhaps uh, double down and uh, partner up with him or something. But it was kind of I thought that was funny. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Everybody was well behaved. We we weren't uh, nothing was brought to our attention uh, that anything bad had, had occurred. So. Everything, every, it seemed like everybody was on their best behavior. I think it was a little smaller than last year. I don't know. I, I don't know. There were moments though where it got a little, um, it got a little, little bit more. Yeah. I think we had a number of people came in later, and yeah. the beer was gone by then. <clears throat> oh, because, that's true. And they might have just said screw it. Yeah. yeah. They showed up and then they hung out and did whatever. But I think the beer went faster this year than last, which may be another good reason to. Uh, partner with the Greenwood group if we can get tag and maybe get an extra get like two barrels because damn it goes quick yes it was fun though it was a, it was a heck of a good time and um it's still it's still my favorite con and it's you know it's the one that from an evercon guy perspective i try to emulate it where i can learn a lot every time i go to it how i can do stuff a little bit better tweak things for my own convention so <clears throat> even just from that perspective it's interesting and hell, you know, I, the way that they run, I, I run into David McGarry and his wife Rose. He's the guy from the Dungeon Board Game. We had him at Evercon. I was talking to him. I said, yeah, David, I just, I, you know, budget's a little tight. I couldn't get you back this year. Sorry. And he and Rose say, you know what, Brad, it's a really nice con. And it's only three hours from the house. Maybe we'll just drive down on Saturday and just game and bring the board. And you can help us set up and we'll play. I'm like, <laughs> I'll comp you a badge and buy you dinner. You got it, Dave. I mean, if you want to show up, that'd be great. So um, you get to meet a lot of really cool people, and um, they remember you. So it's it's fun. It's a really good convention. Yeah. The uh, so for those that are familiar with the venue, so some local folks and folks that have been there, uh, some have been there and may not know this. Uh, you know, I'm going to say this, and they'll be like, still don't know because they don't know the layout of the building. But they are expanding, and they've already um, extended their square footage for next year. It's already wrapped up for the first weekend of November next year. So if you go towards the Clarion Hotel, so if you remember, uh, if you've been here but you didn't get here this year, but if you go towards the Clarion, which is the hotel that is attached, and you go all the way down to the end, there's a little walk to the hotel. They are basically expanding all the way. There's a, an exhibit hall D is the last one. They are expanding to exhibit hall C. So they are one short of having the entire facility for a game hole con. I think there's the. I think a four day con is highly possible. When Alex walked by Thursday and I said. Holy shit, dude. He goes, this is supposed to be dead. This is Will Call. He said, I got a line of people up there begging to throw money at me, and I'm just not set up to take money. He said, we're not ready for that yet. This is like our setup day. Uh, well, you got a four-day con in your hands, bro. <laughs> I saw so, Andrew, and I'm like, I have yeah. to take the week off, man. That's what's going to happen. The, and, the, and one of the reasons they are expanding is that they are expanding True Dungeon for yes. next year. I, you know, So they had... The hall for um, RPGs, the big hall, especially with Adventures League. So they had over 60, like 60, 61 tables of Adventures League. Mm-hmm. It, was in, it was insane, those guys. Tom Valley, oh, that, that Joe shit, That O'Connell. shit never stopped. That shit never stopped. We had a young lady walk up who had started listening to us and is Adventures League GM. And she's like, yeah, you know, well, 10 hours. I'm like, holy crap. She's like, oh, well, there's... Some of the guys are in 12, 16 hours running. And I'm like, ah, damn, they're they're animals, man. They those folks go, they game hard. So they've got a good crew there. They had a lot. I mean, you had a you got to have a lot of DMs to run sixty tables. Yes, so you do. Thomas Valley, props to him, mm-hmm. as well as Joe Alfano. Um, if if you don't know him, that's okay. But if they listen, they should get some some recognition for coordinating that. Um, so yeah, then it's high sound absorbing like ceiling, and then sound absorbing panels on the side, and the tables weren't all on top of each other. So the acoustics, like you could, 
I, you know, I'm like, I could sit at a table and hear the DM if you were at a table and it wouldn't be a problem. Yes. Yeah. Like even last year at Game Hall Con, smaller rooms, it was, and, and even the funk from last year was, was tough because a lot of people had been in those rooms for a long time. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of air movement. And then this is in the big grand hall. So you're talking about, you know, just think of Gen Con in the big organized playrooms where you got that high ceiling. Uh, that's what it was similar to just without the, the plush carpet. But yeah. Anyways. So yeah, they're expanding. It's going to be bigger next year. I don't know what the numbers are yet for this year's attendance. Um, we got to get a hold of Alex it's... after it's all said and done and see what we find out. But you're right, Brad. It was a learning experience um, on a few different levels. And so hopefully um, we touched on those a little bit tonight. I think we're good. All right. Uh, we're going to skip die roll this week. Um, we just, yeah, we're going to do that. We'll do it next week. We'll get some points out there, some inspiration or uh, other articles that we should bring to your attention. I think the last thing to say is that we mentioned, I mentioned um, VC and Edwin and other people, CW, is there just tons of people were there, loads and loads of listeners. And um, we had a little gaming <coughs> paper thing out on the table, excuse me for coughing, and um, we we're tr- trying to get people to sign it just so we could figure out who was all there. And I know there were a bunch of listeners that probably stopped by to talk to us or hang out, and we were busy running around doing something else or running a game at the time. And uh, just thank you. I know it's, it's it may sound corny, but it, it is great to have uh, to watch the con grow and I, I like to believe that we help you know helping the con grow running good events and having all the men and women who like just are they're just really cool to hang out with it's great to see the same faces and new faces every year so if we did not mention you i uh, apologize it's it was really hard <laughs> to remember everybody and uh even Sean, uh, his his uh, mental rolodex that he usually has as a recruiter we we tend to fall short remembering everybody we run into in three days so thank you all it was great yes thank you so much to everybody and so with that i want to bring up uh what put, could potentially be a, another segment of the show that would be more of a spotlight segment uh would not take place in every episode that we do uh affectionately piloting the segment as lawful good alignment um and what we would like to do if you know or you are this this person or are part of a group that fits into this space. Um, Something positive, uh, community-related, how you are involved in gaming and um, benefiting the community. Things that we would like to feature in this segment uh, as like an interview format would be probably very short, three to five minutes, very quick um, synopsis. Some of the examples of that would be people that are working maybe with autistic kids and using role-playing games or even just teaching students using role-playing games. Maybe it's uh, benefits, charities, some type of things that are are positive uh, results of role-playing games or trying to use role-playing games to benefit society in a better manner way shape or form and so if you have suggestions you know of somebody that maybe not be they're not listeners of the show and they don't know that we would do this and put them on and kind of give their uh what they're doing some spotlight and some attention and to propagate that because those people those groups uh some of us don't know about that and they're doing really good work and they're using our hobby to do that good work and we want to recognize that so if you know somebody that's in that space i mean we know i think we want to re- reach out to a few people that we know that are listeners to the show mm-hmm. but don't don't assume that we remember like because we may have known that a year ago we don't know if you're still doing it uh, i know a certain person in australia that's probably doing some good work we may want to bring on the show absolutely uh, and we we will tape them like outside of our normal schedule, and we'll we'll I mean we can it's tape delayed right, so we can kind of import that as part of a an episode. Um, so if you know somebody or you are interested, please 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 let us know. Um, you can send us an email at gamingnbs at gmail dot com would probably be the easiest best way. 
Um, all we would probably be looking for is maybe an email of some kind. And we will reach out to them and say, hey, you know, we heard you're doing something interesting. We would like to talk to you a little bit about that. Very short form format. Um, you know, we may edit it to, depending on how long it is. But, uh, you know, Brett or I or both of us would like to talk to you and go from there. So, yeah, there's a lot of we have enough problems as it is right now. And some people are doing some incredibly really kick ass stuff in this world and it's focused on our hobby. So it'd be really cool. Sean came up with the idea and I just think it's awesome. So if you if you've got anything like this, get in, get in touch with us. We want to we want to help spread the word. That's right. So what are we talking about next week, Brett? Well, uh, Scott Hubbs and I were chatting at his OSR booth and ours, and we were talking Let's about... Hey, that's, that's Jason Hobbs. Is it Jason Hobbs? Oh, yeah, we know of, him now. Of, of Hobbs and Friends of the OSR. The OSR. Exactly. Right. So, yes. yeah. Jason and I were yak, and then Hobbs and I were talking about combat and different components of it. He used the phrase combat as story, and I thought, you know, damn it, that's really cool. And uh, maybe we'll get lucky enough we can drag Hobbs onto the show. We'll see if we can maybe finagle such a thing. If not... Sean and I could at least maybe take a crack at it. So that's what we'll try to do. Well, excellent. I certainly look forward to that. Of course uh, you do. I do. I do. But anyways, thank you, everybody, for listening to the show, taking part in our community, running games for us, uh, just being great, awesome people. Thank you so much. Uh, also, these awesome people that have supported our show through our Patreon uh, to include Christian, Kevin, Joe, Brett's biggest fan, Jeff, Forrest, Mark, Eric, Andy, Sean, Tim, Knights of the Night, Palladian, Remy, Jason, Wayne, James, Pure, Mongrel, Lord, <laughs> Lord Tentacle, Corey, Brandon, Tim, Dan, CW, The Lost Sailor, Graham, Todd, Roger, Misdirected Mark, Old School DM, Jason, Christopher, Finolf, Mirko, Eileen, Tony, Todd, Jim, Michael, Wistatic, Alexander, Rodrigo, Neil, Ron, Chris, Eric, Soldiers of Misfortune RPG, Curtis, Christopher, Gordon, Mark, Larry, Evan, Ray, Mark, Eli, Ron, Stefan, Craig, Xavier, J, V, Matt, John, Derelict Radio, John, Jared, and Mark. Sweet. I'll tell you what, I'm going to throw one more thanks out there before I forget. I would be loath to uh, be, I'd be so mad at myself. But for everybody who came to the booth on Saturday and played Happy Salmon with my kids and hung out with my, my two little ones and talked with them and let them babble about gaming and just interacted with them, thank you very much. They were ecstatic. It, uh, it's really touching, and I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. That was amazing. Thank you. Yes. They were good kids, Brad. You got you did good, buddy. Thanks, man. Well, that's all yep. Susan. I just you... <laughs> yeah, well, I just show up. <laughs> it's, a, it's a team effort. It's gotta be, right? You know, exactly. To some degree. All right. So if you would like to consider uh supporting the show via our Patreon, head over to gamingnbs.com forward slash Patreon. For the cost of a coffee shop coffee, you can support the show for an entire month. So thank you to everyone that does that. Thank you again for listening. I'm one of your hosts, Sean. And I'm Brett. Good night and good game and all.